I remember a time where Oberon was a very popular Warframe. It was a time where defense missions were the be-all and end-all of farming. It was a time where seeing two, three and sometimes even four Oberons in a defense mission was just a regular occurrence. Constant area of effect damage over time with hollowed ground combined with high AoE burst damage of Reckoning and sustain of renewal made him an absolute beast. Unfortunately, as time went on, the enemies became tougher and the enemy roster became more varied, and Oberon's damage didn't really keep up with the enemy changes and with the new Warframes that were being released. Now, don't get me wrong, Oberon can still do a lot of damage, but it's nothing when compared to the amount of supportive power that he has. Whether it is proccing puncture on enemies to reduce the damage they do by 30%, removing status effects from allies, straight up healing them or briefly stunning enemies and affecting them with radiation so they would much rather shoot their comrade than your fellow Tenno. So let's finally take a look at this supportive beast, shall we? So first of all, you get Oberon by simply playing the game, because all of his parts drop from Eximus units. And according to Wiki, you will have to kill around 605 units to get a full set. Now, this may sound like a lot, and it kind of is if you just want to get Oberon, but I wouldn't really recommend grinding for Oberon, because you can do whatever you want, and while you're doing it, you'll be killing Eximus units anyway. Oberon is actually a pretty beefy Warframe. He has 125 health, which goes up to 375 at rank 30, 100 shields, which go up to 300 at rank 30, and 150 armor, which is way above average. He has 100 power, which goes up to 150 at rank 30, and an average sprint speed of 1. And finally, he has 3 polarities, 2 Vs, and an additional V in the aura slot. Oberon is one of the few Warframes that have 5 augments for their abilities. 4 of them are used for PvE, and 1 of them is used for PvP. You can get his PvE augments by either reaching the rank of General under the Steel Meridian or the rank of Flawless under New Loka and spending 25,000 standing. Now, the PvP augment can be bought from Teshin if you're the rank of Tempest or higher in Conclave and also costs 25,000 standing. And finally, before we take a more in-depth look at his abilities, let's take a look at this passive, which is called Beastmaster where all wildlife, it doesn't matter if it's neutral or enemy, within 10 meters of Oberon will temporarily become allied fighting for him for 20 seconds. And according to Wiki, it only works on Ferrocubros, Ferrocovats, Drax and Haikas, but for me it worked for the Uranus Sharks as well. Now on top of that, as Oberon, if you have a Kubro or a Kavat and they get downed, if you pick up a health orb, they will be revived with a little bit of health. So Oberon's first ability is called Smite, where Oberon smites a target within 50 meters for 500 damage, affecting them with radiation, which will confuse them and make them fight other enemies. The target will then emit 6 projectiles that will home in on enemies within 12.5 meters, and each one of these projectiles will do 150 radiation damage and affect enemies with puncture, reducing the damage they do by 30% for 6 seconds. Now, the projectiles from the enemy will fly in random directions and they will only start homing in if there is an enemy nearby. However, if they don't manage to find an enemy within 12 seconds, they will disappear. Now, the initial damage, the damage of the projectiles and the number of projectiles are all affected by power strength, the duration of the projectiles is affected by power duration, and the cast range and the range at which these projectiles will seek an enemy is affected by power range. And finally, multiple projectiles can hit a single enemy and it's a one-handed ability, so we can use it while performing many actions, including reloading. The augment for Smite is called Smite Infusion, where casting Smite on an ally will add 100% bonus radiation damage to their attacks for 40 seconds. You can push the bonus damage all the way up to 349% by using power strength mods and you can increase the duration with power duration mods. And in addition to buffing your fellow Tenno, you can also use this on companions, specters, mind-controlled enemies, necrosis shadows, sarin's mods, loki's decoy, invasion allies and clones created by bladestorm. Oberon's second ability is called Hallowed Ground, where Oberon sanctifies the ground with purifying flames, creating an area that is 4 meters wide and 11 meters long. Hollow Ground will last for 20 seconds, and enemies stood within this hollow ground will take 100 radiation damage every half a second. And if Oberon or his allies stand within the hollow ground, they will gain 20% bonus armor, will have all negative status effects removed from them, and will be immune to further application of status effects, which does include knockdowns and staggers. 
The damage of Hollow Ground and the armor buff are both affected by power strength, the duration is affected by power duration and the length and width of the Hollow Ground is affected by power range. The augment for Hallowed Ground is called Hallowed Eruption, where recasting Hallowed Ground when you already have Hallowed Ground active will cause it to detonate dealing 100% of the remaining damage in the area of Hallowed Ground and it affects enemies with radiation. Now the damage this explosion does isn't directly affected by mods, because it's dependent on how much damage your Hallowed Ground does and how much duration it has left. So technically the explosion damage is affected by power strength and power duration. Oberon's third ability is called Renewal, where Oberon smacks the ground with his melee weapon, healing himself and sending healing orbs to his allies. Oberon and his allies that were reached by the healing orbs, which by the way do have infinite range, will be instantly healed for 125 health, an additional 400 health over 10 seconds. Now on top of this, it will also dispel all negative status effects. And as if this ability wasn't awesome enough, if an ally is on the ground and he's bleeding out, it will slow the bleed out by 45%. However, the bleed out reduction will only last 10 seconds. Now, as soon as you activate the ability and the healing over time effect kicks in, a renewal will drain 5 energy every second. And if you run out of energy or you simply press the ability button again, the healing over time effect will stop. Now, power strength affects the amount of healing this ability does. Power duration reduces the energy drain for the healing over time effect and it increases the duration of the ability. However, it reduces the duration of the healing over time effect. So the more power duration you have, the less energy the healing over time effect is going to drain, but it's also going to heal in a shorter amount of time. But overall, the ability is going to last longer. And power efficiency will of course reduce the initial activation cost of the ability as well as reduce the drain for the healing over time effect. The augment for renewal is called Phoenix Renewal, where if you have renewal active and you take damage that would otherwise kill you, you will be healed to 50% health instead. And this effect has a separate internal cooldown for each ally, which is 90 seconds. And Oberon's fourth and final ability is called Reckoning, where Oberon picks up all enemies within 15 meters and violently slams them into the ground, dealing 1250 damage. Now if an enemy dies from this, they have a 50% chance of spawning a health orb, and if they survive, they will be affected with radiation, will emit a 4 meter flash that will blind all enemies and will be blinded for 4 seconds themselves. Now the damage of Reckoning is affected by power strength and 50% of the damage is impact and 50% is radiation. The radius at which you pick up enemies and slam them into the ground, as well as the blind radius that enemies emit if they survive the ability, are affected by power range, and the blind duration is affected by power duration. The PvP augment for Reckoning is called Default Reckoning, where if you kill an enemy and they drop a health orb, enemy players won't be able to pick it up for 10 seconds. And the PvE augment for Reckoning is called Hallowed Reckoning, where every enemy affected with Reckoning will spawn a smaller, weaker version of Hallowed Ground, which will increase armor of your allies by 250 and deal 150 damage to enemies over 10 seconds. The duration of this Hallowed Ground is affected by power duration and the armor bonus and damage per second is affected by power strength. So the conclusion, is Oberon worth it? Hell yeah he is! He is an amazing supportive Warframe, I mean every single one of his abilities does something awesome and people tend to overlook him because he's kind of this Warframe that you get whether you want him or not. So it's just like, well, if he's that widely accessible, he just isn't that great, right? Wrong, he is awesome! Especially after the Trinity Blessing nerf, because now her blessing isn't map wide. Oberon's heal is. He doesn't have the damage reduction portion of it, but he can reduce the damage the enemies do by simply smiting them. And removing status effects is really useful because when I play against the Grenier or the Infested, 90% of the time I die because of either a slash proc or a toxin proc. I don't die because the enemies do too much damage. And even if they did, I have renewal, I can heal myself. And if the enemies become too strong for your weapons, just confuse them with radiation and let them heal each other. Oberon is awesome. And it saddens me that he's not played more often. So if you've never built Oberon and you've been selling his parts for credits, build him, try him out. You'll find out that he's quite an amazing Warframe that's tanky, has a lot of supportive abilities and has a lot of offensive potential as well. And that's pretty much it for the video. So I thank you very much for watching as always and I will see you next time. Bye bye.